What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Olo here. So we'll be talking about several different topics in this video here again today. We'll be talking about Scream 6. We'll be talking about Sick. We'll be talking about Megan. And then we'll be rounding it out by talking about Violent Night 2. So just to kick it off, of course, with Scream 6, Kevin Williamson chimed in on why he thinks Wes Craven would be happy with Scream 6. He revealed this during an interview with uh, Movie Maker a few days back. It said, or he said, that it has some signature moves that Wes would have done himself. I feel like they've elevated themselves. They took what they did in the last one and turned it up a notch in reference to Scream 5, of course, and what they're doing now in 6. I'm just so thrilled. It's so much fun. It's a beautiful sequel. This is Scream 6, so it could have gone in a different direction, meaning it could have gone bad, but it didn't. It went in the right direction. Scream 6 feels fresh and new. And it changes a lot. Now, if anyone is going to speak for Wes, it would need to be Kevin Williamson or anyone else who is closely connected to him or has worked right alongside of him like this man has and like we know he has, not any of us. <laughs> given that the trailer or given what the trailer provided and the story beats we know of, I don't see a reason why Wes wouldn't love this. Now, you can say that there are aspects of it that maybe he wouldn't love, but as a whole, what they did in five and what they did here or what they're doing what it seems they're doing here i see nothing to, to to think of why he wouldn't love this as a whole uh i've seen people make some very large box office predictions about this movie as well uh i will say that a 200 million total worldwide isn't impossible because scream 3 i believe has become the closest to that if it makes 200 million that would be fantastic to see that would just that might that might green light two more sequels i would hope that they stop at seven and take a break and then return but of course if the momentum is behind them you can easily just continue on the series and just shift focus away from sydney sam all the characters we've known and just kind of go into the future in that way and then also when you finish up with those new set of characters if you want to go in the future routes and not have any of the characters we know and know right now you can easily switch it back to sydney's kids later when they're grown up do something like that just to jump into sick now this is from the same interview williamson shared his thoughts on sick becoming a franchise he said that's true it could easily be a franchise i don't know if it will become one at the time it was born as a way to pass the time during quarantine and it expressed our rage and anxiety towards what we were all going through collectively when we first started i wasn't sure it would live to see the light of day and then it did we wrote the script and miramax really liked it so they gave us some money to make it later it sold to jason blum so spoilers are going to be here for sick uh so click away and come back after 50 seconds or so if you haven't seen this movie sick has such a one and done feel to it with the parents wanting revenge for their son getting covid and dying from the main girl that gave it to him that i can't imagine a franchise being born out of it like what would you do next find more isolated stories about how extreme both sides can be when it relates to handling the pandemic i mean you can what you i guess you can retain the slasher element but what i think i'm becoming tied to is if you want to repeat the same motive over and over again or would you find new outlets to explore as it pertains to motives people could have about their negative thoughts about how others might be not behaving how they think they should be during this crucial time that it's important to everybody's health because i like how it was kind of exploring the extremes of both sides so there's probably an idea out there that can be cooked up but i just don't see this really warranting a sequel but you guys can let me know down in the comment section below what direction you would take a sequel to sick in did you like sick do you not want to see a sequel do you think it warrants a sequel i'm on the side right now if i don't hear an idea from someone else i don't think that this warrants a sequel not at all but just to jump into the unrated cut of megan the unrated cut is still expected to arrive, and I wanted to share this small update from CineStealth over on Twitter who has garnered trust based on previous information that I've seen be correct, such as, just to give an example, the Friday the 13th announcement about a prequel show being teased by this account, and then it happened not too long afterwards. So CineStealth tweeted a couple days back that this version of Megan is real, referring to the unrated cut, and that it's coming. Now, I know the first time we were hearing about this was coming from Akila Cooper, who was telling us about it so now CineStealth is doubling down on that and telling us that it is coming let me say this if it gets a physical media release this will be the version i own 
and not the one I saw in theaters. Because I just know that the unrated version will only enhance the already solid, the already solid movie that Megan is, despite the PG-13 rating holding it back from the gore that it showed. The movie does a great job at relying on building tension and unease about the doll to remain terrifying, so the absence of the gore never creates a major problem. I think where the problem comes in for a lot of people is when it's now time to get to the gore, we're cutting away from it. The, the, they're playing up with our imagination probably a little bit too much instead of just showing the kills because you know they're cutting away from it or at least jumping to the next scene because whatever was about to be shown whatever was shot was cut out due to the pg-13 rating that the movie landed itself with so this unrated version is probably going to make the slasher moments later on in the movie a lot more satisfying to look at but again without the slasher stuff and even even with them cutting away from it the movie isn't just creating a major problem for itself when it has no gore that's how great of a job they did building building tension suspense and maintaining a horror vibe by by and via through the doll itself and not relying overly on gore but now that the gore is here give it to me i want to see it so i cannot wait to see this unrated cut come out when it releases uh or cannot wait to see the unrated cut when it releases <laughs> so just to kick it off or not kick it off round it out with the direct sequel to violent night 2 that apparently is coming tommy ricola is returning to direct violent night 2 this report is coming from the rap ricola says there's stuff we left on the floor like the north pole mrs claus the elves but story-wise i think we have a really really cool idea that expands on the world and scope but still keeping that tone that we love from the first one now if you saw violent night with david harbour you know exactly what that movie is about uh santa claus is real santa claus is not what we were told he was growing up Santa Claus is an alcoholic. Santa Claus has his own problems. Santa Claus has been around for thousands of years. Looks like he used to be a gladiator or some type of warrior in the past. I haven't seen the movie recently, but I recall very much so enjoying the movie for what it was. Now, if they are able to cook up an even better sequel, then I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, I am excited to see what can happen from a sequel to Violet Night. Are you excited to see a Violet Night sequel? Or do you just think they should leave it alone? Did you even enjoy the first one? So you guys can let me know what you think about all of this down in the comment section below. Violent Night, Sick 2, or just Sick becoming a franchise, the Scream 6 stuff, the unrated Megan Cut. Which of this bit of information that I shared with you did you find to be the most interesting? If you haven't already, of course, you can go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.